Hi guys, this is Eric Marcy, and I recently just picked up a Audio Code C450 HD phone, and I want to go ahead and do a uh, overview and unboxing of the device. So let's go ahead and hop in. So we're going to go ahead and open up the package here. Uh, out the bat, we get some instruction guides, a quick start on how to use the device and what different buttons are in different languages, along with some regulatory information. We get the phone itself. We'll come back to that here in a minute. And then depending on which model of the phone you get, uh, we'll actually determine if you get a included power cable or not. Uh, this is a 12 volt, two amp power cable. The cable for the handset. An included ethernet cable. The handset itself. A wall mounting bracket for the device and then the stand for the device if it were to be installed on a desk. Looking at the device, uh, we can see here that we have a nice uh, 720p display on the top of the phone. Um, and then with this phone, we actually do get buttons included on the device. Um, there are some Teams phones out there that do not have any buttons at all. Um, so it is nice to see these on this device. And these buttons do not feel mushy. Um, they feel uh, very nice compared to um, some cheaper phones. So you are paying for a premium device here, which is quite nice to see. Um, down here you have your whole transfer redial buttons, um, contacts, voicemail, menu, cancel, volume controls, mute, headset, and speakerphone along with your uh, dial pad. Um, look at the bottom of the device is the hole for the microphone uh, if you are using this in a speakerphone type environment. And around the back of the device, we do have an auxiliary port. Uh, this port is used for the sidecar expansion for the device. Uh, currently, that is not supported by Microsoft Teams. That only works when this phone is in Skype or business mode. The yellow port is the uplink port to your network. The next port is a switch that allows you to go ahead and plug into your, your computer into the phone. So you can, uh, if you have just one cable at your desk, you can easily just plug the, the cable into the phone and then plug the other end into your PC. Um, this is a headset jack. And then covered up here with this little stopper is the 12 volt power port if you are not using PoE. In this case, I will be using PoE, so I will not need that. And then you have two USB ports um, that works with any type of market leading headset from whether it's Jabra, um, Plantronics, or Sennheiser. And then here is the back of the mounting mechanism on the phone. So depending on which mount you use is uh, going to depend on how you put this, the phone in um, to the base. Um, so this here is the wall mount, and the wall mount is just two screws that you're going to screw into your wall. You're going to take this slider on, and then the phone just simply slides right into this uh, bracket. So in that scenario, the phone will be nice and flush with the wall um, if you are using in a wall mount scenario. Um, mo more likely though, uh, you will be using the other base. So the base allows you to put the phone into the base uh, either direction. Um, so if you were to put the phone in where the long side is sticking out, the phone will actually lay down, uh, stand up more um, than what it normally would. Um, so this allows, you know, if you're you know sitting at your desk a lot, it's right in front of you, allows you to see the screen more clearly. But if you're another type of user, and you want the phone to lay down more, maybe you have more things in your desk, you don't have enough uh, height clearance, you just flip that around and slide it up, and the device will go ahead and sit at a different angle, um, which is much, much more um, economical or usable for some users. Um, so we're gonna go through the full setup of this device. So we're gonna go ahead and first grab the included uh, headset cord, uh, handset cord. And you'll notice that there are two ends on this cable. Um, one is long and one is short. The one that is long is the one that goes onto the phone. So down here at the bottom of the device, um, there's the small port right here. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna plug this in to the port. And then you simply have to bend it in like an S type pattern, but there's these two little nubs that you need to put the cable through. So we're gonna go ahead and push it through the first one. And then as it's through that first um, nub, we're gonna go ahead and bend that over the second one. You'll note that that cable is now locked in there pretty tightly. We're gonna go ahead and flip the phone over, and we're gonna grab our handset, and we're gonna go ahead and plug in the other end into the handset. The handset will now nicely sit on the phone. 
Now, whether or not you're using PoE will determine if you're going to use the included 12 volt power cable. Um, but if you are using PoE, you can use the included Ethernet cable. Um, I already have a cable over here. And then we're going to go ahead and plug this in to a switch that's providing PoE power to the device. You'll see that you get some nice lights on the screen and you'll also be getting the audio codes display on the phone. So we're going to go ahead and give that a few minutes to boot up and then we'll uh, catch you on the other side of the boot up process. We're going to go ahead and get uh, signed into Microsoft Teams. Um, so as soon as the phone boots up, uh, you'll be greeted with the screen that says Welcome to Microsoft Teams, a happier place for teams to work together. And we're going to go ahead and tap the Sign In button. After this, uh, the Teams phone will go ahead and start to bring up the login from Teams. Now you could simply just click here on the email or phone option to go ahead and sign in directly on the device. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to type and hit this other option that says sign in from another device. And what's going to happen is Microsoft is going to go ahead and display a code on the phone that you can go ahead and go to the Microsoft.com slash device login and enter that and go ahead and log directly into your Teams account. So we'll go ahead and go over to our PC and take a look at that. We are now over here on our PC and we have gone to the Microsoft.com slash device login page. And we're going to go ahead and enter the code that we see on our screen. And we're going to go ahead and click next. It is then going to go ahead and ask us to sign in directly into the Intune company portal. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and sign in with one of my test accounts. And now it's going to say that you have signed into the Microsoft Intune Company portal. Please check over on the phone. Now that we've signed in on the PC, the phone's going to ask if you want to make sure that you want to grant permission to make phone calls and also activate the Android device administrator on this device. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. And now the phone is going to register to Azure Active Directory and begin setting up the process to sign you into Microsoft Teams. Now that the phone is signed into Microsoft Teams, uh, the phone is going to go ahead and state, I give you kind of a heads up uh, that you can have calls with video, audio, and screen sharing. And then ask what type of login this is, whether it's a personal or a shared phone. In this case, it's going to be a personal phone. And the phone is going to complete the sign-in process to Microsoft Teams now. So now the Teams app is open on the Audio Codes phone, and uh, the phone is actually still booting up, so it will run a tiny bit slow for the first part. But if we go here to settings, um, if you do not have an option to go ahead and set a dark mode on the phone, uh, you will need to go ahead and update the phone from the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. So we're going to go ahead and hop over to the Teams Admin Center to take a look what that looks like from that end. So over in the Teams Admin Center, we're going to go navigate to the Devices tab, and then click on the Phones page. On the phones page, we're going to go ahead and see all the phones that are entitled to our organization. So in this case, we'll look, click on this audio code C450HD that we just added. And you'll see here that the phone firmware and the OEM app is currently um, out of date and it needs some updates. So we're going to go ahead and click on See Available Updates. And we'll see here that we have a firmware update for the phone. So we're going to go ahead and click on Update, and then if we click on the OEM Agent app, we're going to go ahead and update that as well. You can also set a schedule up here if you if you want to select a rollout time if you don't want it to be immediate. In this case, we're going to force it immediately, and we're going to click Update. Alternatively, if you wanted to go ahead and update the phone uh, quickly, you could just check this, hit this little checkbox, and then hit Update back on the Phones page, and select each individual. Um, setting that needs an update uh, without actually going into the device itself. So this is useful if you're updating multiple devices at the same time um, and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and hop over to the phone and watch what happens when the phone does receive the update. 
So the phone is now updated and we are on the newer Teams firmware. Um, so as you can see here from the homepage, uh, we do have our calling app. And up here in the top right, we do have a search to search for somebody in your organization directly. And then next to that, we do have the button for uh, Call Park. So if you were to press that, if there's a park call, let's say number 10, you would dial a number 10 and hit OK and you would be connected with that caller. Um, here you have your call history of people that you have called and then the option to go ahead and redial them or add to a contact. On the bottom we have your calendar button and this will go ahead and show you any scheduled meeting that you can go ahead and join here right inside the phone. And then the voicemail tab will show you any voicemails that you have on the phone. And then if you hit up here in the top right, you can see we can go ahead and change our presence. And as we change our presence, the phone itself will go ahead and change the color on it. Um, so we do have different options. Uh, you can easily reset your status as well. Uh, you can also set a status message. And you also have your hot desk options. If we go ahead and click on settings, this is where we can go ahead and access the options to go ahead and select our dark theme, uh, look more into the calling, our profile, and so forth. Another feature about the Audio Code C450HT that makes this device unique is that it is able to be uh, booted into a Skype for Business firmware along with the Microsoft Teams firmware. So uh, to get into the Skype for Business mode on this device, we're going to go ahead and click on the hamburger button in the top left and then click on settings. We're going to scroll down and we're going to click on device settings. Under device settings, we're going to scroll the way down to the bottom and we're going to go ahead and click on device administration. And then um, if I was not logged in, you would see this, but we're going to, you would hit login user and then enter one, two, three, four on the phone keypad. Then if you go back to the phone and you'll see new options pop up under device administration, we're going to click on the debugging option. Under the debugging option, you'll see the option to switch to Skype for Business. And we'll ask, are you sure that you want to switch to Skype for Business? We're going to go ahead and click on OK. The device will now reboot and boot into the native Skype for Business firmware that comes with the Audio Codes phones. The phone is now rebooted into the same Skype for Business firmware that is available on the Audio Codes 450 and the 445 HD. Um, from here, we can go ahead and click on sign in and sign in with one of these four options into Skype for Business. Um, but if you do want to switch back to the Microsoft Teams mode of the device, we can go ahead and press menu, administration, and our password of 1234. Hit OK. And then you'll see option number five is switch to Teams. At this point, the device will go ahead and reboot and you will go ahead and be back into the same firmware that is on Microsoft Teams. This is really useful for organizations that are moving between Skype for Business Server and Microsoft Teams, so whether or not they had a failed migration you have to revert back, it's quick and easy to switch the phone, whereas with other manufacturers you have to actually upgrade the firmware on the device for it to um, boot into the older firmware, whether you're switching from Skype to Microsoft Teams. So the device will go ahead and boot up here. It'll probably take here another minute or two, and it'll be back at the same Teams experience that we um, have seen so far. One really great feature to take into account on the device is the superior audio quality that Audio Codes provides. Uh, for example, I'm going to go ahead and dial into a response script that I have sitting on Skype for Business Server to hear a how the audio sounds on the device. I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick that up, but the audio coming out of the speakerphone on the device and the handset does have quite a nice bit of bass, uh, which is great to see from a premium uh, Microsoft Teams phone. So this has been my overview of the Audio Code C450HD while in Microsoft Teams mode. Um, if you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my website is www.ucit.blog. My Twitter is twitter.com slash ericmarcy, M-A-R-S-I. And feel free to comment below and subscribe to the channel for future UC updates.